<laughs> I was thinking about that song the other day. I was like, oh shit, whatever happened now? Yeah. And that's like what there's I mean, it took it's been a strange it's been a strange year. Um yeah. thankfully none of us were like scared of coming here. <laughs> because everybody else in the world was like, uh don't hang out with anybody. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, like, we were all just like, fuck it, whatever yeah. we mean up. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. let's just get through it like normal. I feel like for the us, it never, it was always normal. It, like, nothing ever really changed almost. There was like a brief conversation. We chilled for a second. We chilled that? for like a month. Didn't yeah, we? Yeah, there was a few, there was definitely a few weeks, but it wasn't like, it felt really, because nobody knew what was going on. But I felt certainly like we were like, okay, this is our small circle. Like, I'm not letting this change. And I don't really care. Like, let's go. We'll just play on Thursdays. But the ch the change was like from going from going from Palmetto to here was like a whole interesting like uh, I don't know rebirth and sort of a way. But well, it gave us a spot because we can we got out of the rehearsal space. Yeah. And then we could just come here and do both things: record and and rehearse. And during COVID times, when people were doing nothing, I felt like I was like very creative, for sure. Yeah. Like much more creative than maybe a lot of people. It seems like people are coming out with records now, though. Um, but I don't know. I'm super thankful yeah. for that. Yeah. And people kind of tripped out at my like people I talk to at work and stuff. They trip out at the fact that I'm able to say, "Oh, we've been, oh, we've been doing this the whole time." Yeah. <laughs> so simple, but. Well, now I mean, now it's like, why wasn't everybody doing this the whole time? Yeah, you know what I mean. True. But at the same time, nobody knew. it was gonna kill everybody. <laughs> so, I just, which is so interesting because I was like a, I was like a year, I was just like freshly off of a, you know, like an autoimmune disease diagnosis. So I was kind of like, right. well, if these bros don't care, I certainly don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's one more thing? Just like add it to the list. Yep. So. I'm half Mexican, so we <laughs> like, <laughs> so it can't kill. You it can't, was never just can't kill you. You are too. I am, technically, yeah. by definition. I Is your dad right. quarter percent? Quarter. Your dad's half. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My dad is half. And it, well, technically, we found out my 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 dad. We thought my dad was half Italian, half Mexican, and it turns out he's half whale. Which is crazy. We thought he was half Italian, like, and my grandma's from whale which is near ireland which welsh. welsh 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 yeah. whale yeah. welsh whatever it is dude whatever it is i was like well, half whale uh and that's that uh, he's got a huge dick <laughs> he's got a 15 foot dick <laughs> okay right. oh man we're but, back yeah. we're back he how did he find out uh he did the it's the like, family the what is it the yeah. Uh, lending tree, whatever. what is it? The freaking <laughs> where you put your spit in the tube and yeah. Yeah. send it or whatever. This is how funny yeah, my mom is them. speaking of those. This is, uh, this is my mom not thinking for Christmas, thinks this would be a really good gift to get me and my sister. <laughs> Which just Six one clothes. would tell you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't catch just, it right away. Just, oh, yeah. Yeah. just like me That's or my sister, gift. you'd get the same. You'd know exactly where you came. From. Just double the. <laughs> yeah, we're like. I think they're kind of expensive. You're like. We we're gonna get the same results. I know. <laughs> what if you don't? Or not? Yeah. Oh, what yeah, if you didn't? Dude, oh, and you're like, whoa! Funny. That would be a trip. Life oh, mom exposes. Dude. Mom exposes the whole operation on accident for Christmas. <laughs> mom exposes. Mom. Accidental gifts go just yeah. family drama, dude. Two twenty-three and me's one to me, one to my sister. Dang. Yeah, it's still sitting in the drawer. I just thought it was so funny. Like my mom's so innocent. I you haven't done I it. I loved it. No, no, my sister no, did. I'm interested. Yeah, I didn't need that. to do it. <laughs> We only needed I'm interested one. Interested in the thing. Yeah. Apparently yeah. See the really, background. Apparently, it's really interesting. Yeah, we found out she's from she's from Wales, dude, and we're just like, oh shoot. So like, I'm like Irish almost on both sides, yeah. which explains like the red and the beard mm, and everything. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of. But crazy. you're still Delgado. Still Delgado, dude. All Mexicans. The Welsh Mexican. mean true the to the Mexican name, dude. Yeah, and the Mexican. Irish have a thing. It's in a my thing. mind. In, it's in a thing. Mind. Yeah. I um, noticed that. Bianca's uh, Mexican Irish too. Really? Yeah. I don't know what her mom, her dad, her dad is at least. Interesting. But anyway, like, yeah, like very Mexican grandpa and very Irish red. You know, I think it's pale. The, maybe the, I was grandma. just talking about this with a buddy at work. It's I think it's a lot of the 
Catholicism, Spanish, yeah, Mexican, like the value and the Irish. Yeah. All that, all they all yeah. share that Catholicism, those roots. Oh, that's interesting. That's in, I didn't even think yeah. about that. Same with all. Philippines. Fil- the Filipinos uh, were it raided by Spain, mm-hmm. and that's why a lot of Filipinos have like Spanish uh, roots or like Mexican names and stuff like that. That's right, they do. It's pretty crazy. Guess what? That's what you get for having two Mexicans in your band. You just learn something new every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> and black. we're drinking Modelo. I know, right? <laughs> dude, cerveza is the way to go, dude. <laughs> Anything else is not good enough. All right, so we're yeah, in. I think we're good. Yeah, we're in. For those of you that don't know, <clears throat> Derek Delgado, Rodney Cox, Danny Garcia, myself, Luke. And, yeah. The record's done. The record is done. The record goes to ma- is already at mastering. Yeah, sent it off to mastering. Well, that's like really good. That's a really good way to start it, I guess. And and it's something that <clears throat> I think we're all. It, I know that Derek, Rodney, and myself are intrigued by just like the sort of self dedication and um and knowing more about your desire to record, uh, to be a producer, to be an engineer, and how that how that sort of like sparked for you and where that came from that's a good question i've just i think i've always just liked recorded music uh and i started when i started making music maybe late 90s it was like sample based hip-hop and so sample based hip-hop you just focus on you're like focusing on on records really so it was just like an obsession with records uh, and then so sonically the stuff like probably just subconsciously got to me like like live music i've never been um drawn to like i mean i like a good show or a performance or something but it's never been like on my mind as something that I need to investigate. Right. But recording, like records, recordings, the way they sound and stuff. Yeah. Have always and so been. you're like actually sampling, actually sampling records. Yeah. And then what else? Eight, like 808? I used the MPC. MPC, yeah. And so it was all sample based <clears throat> yeah, stuff okay. pretty much. I mean, I would buy other sounds and stuff, but. And then I started playing the guitar more seriously. I always played instruments growing up, but um, when was that? Maybe 2000, 2001, I started playing the guitar. And then when, once I started making noise myself, I was like, oh, I can try and emulate these these old records. So you started producing first before instruments. Yeah, it's like hip hop kind of hip hop oh, stuff. But I played. I played people. growing That's up tight. though. Yeah. yeah, I played instruments, but I don't. That's what I always go back to because w- when I get, when I have that kind of existential crisis, like what am I doing? This music, this music shit. Like when I was in elementary school, I'd played violin, saxophone. And was in choir, which is not cool. <laughs> and I wanted to be like cool. It's like playing. Yeah. It's like playing the recorder. But yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah. killing it. Like, well, yeah. yeah okay. So I, I, there was like, an, in, there was something in me that was drawn trying to do this, even though I wasn't good at it or right. I wasn't a natural. Yeah. Um, and again, I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to stand out, but I still did it anyways. So, um, yeah, it's kind of ingrained ingrained in me. It's like a family choice or like family influence at all probably my dad played saxophone oh shit. and guitar your grandpa oh, played guitar damn. right he did i didn't really know i have that guitar that yeah. was i knew it was my dad's and then oh it was your dad's i'm sorry I thought well it was, it was my grandpa's yeah it was so it's been handed down most of my life from it the was men. known i knew it as my dad's and then maybe two years ago or two or three years ago i was visiting my grand my grandma and she's like yeah that's your grandpa's you give it to your dad and Oh, cool. It's that nylon string I have yeah. here sitting around. But yeah, and so I'm still... Because I was... How good... Like, how good were you... I always think about your Habitat part where in the intro you're playing guitar. Yeah. How good at guitar were you at that point? I was always pretty good. Like, I could... But I wasn't really creative. I didn't... Right. And I like wasn't... Like, you were just listening. You were just learning other, other yeah. things to play. Like so I was getting the people's. technical stuff down forever. Like, I wish I would have started writing and improvising way earlier. And that's what I try to tell people now is to right. get in touch with your... The more abstract and the unknown part of playing. Get in touch with that as well as the technical stuff and learning stuff you like. Mm-hmm. Learning why you like it. And then forget about that and just make noise for a while. 
and trying to practice all because they're different those are different sure. parts of the well, brain I, mean, I think that in some sense we're like the perfect we're like the mirrored image of each other because i did completely the opposite i learned three chords and started immediately writing songs yeah and just all in, <laughs> intuition yeah 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 and just like trying to figure it out and it's still show i mean like my sort of <clears throat> just infantile you know writing brain you still see it come out and uh Baby, I mean, baby blue and orange is like a like a perfect example. There's like an and one on it that yeah. just doesn't make any sense with a drummer. But at the same, when I play it on acoustic, it makes total sense. But it's just me like not still fully being aware of like what's going on. I'm like, oh, I guess just just this just works for me, yeah. you know. And this I like does trip I get insecure about it. But then I'll talk to people, <clears throat> you know, like who do have a very keen understanding of music and they're like, ah, that's like, that's, those are things that Dylan would do all the time or, you know, like, uh, but I, yeah, I went to complete. But they're idiosyncratic. They're kind of right. like a, um, a thumbprint or something. Yeah, sure. If, sure. if it's yours, it's yours. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to exist in the, <laughs> in, when you're like, oh yeah, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> and not get insecure about it. That's but, a good, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> a good spot for me these days. Right. And I even try to practice it. You might have hear it. You might have heard me say it in here. Is I don't know why. Right. But I'm, because sometimes I'll feel like I want to make a move with the recording or something, and then I got to spend a minute, and that's energy and time, trying to rationalize why. Right. Instead mm. of saying like I don't know, but I can feel it, so yeah. might as well just go through with it real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So then, <clears throat> moving forward with the original with the original question though, uh, and then, when was it that you started writing songs? And then did you just start demoing like in your in your bedroom? And then this yeah. eventually grew into sort of more of a production mind. Yeah, I can't remember when I started writing songs. It was very sparse for a while, maybe, maybe like fifteen years ago, mm. or so around there, pretty sparsely. Yeah. And they were so bad. Like, it took me so, so long to just get decent, which is crazy. Because your, your early songs were, were good I know my pretty quickly. I know my very first song that I, that I wrote start to finish. And it's on the first Romney Rye record. It's called All the Boys. See, that's and it interesting, was, yeah. It was, after the, it was after the color <clears throat> broke up. And so that's how I learned to play music. Dave Kwan was in the color. Me and Dave Kwan were in college together, and he would just tell me where to put my fingers. But I don't even necessarily know if he knew what was going on. He just knew, like, the, you know, the chord changes and where, like, it would correspond on the neck. You know, like, we never, in the color, it was never, like, you know, one, five, six, two, one. It was never any of those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, like... That's a good rock and roll band, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's the way it should be, kind of. I mean, yeah, was, mm. what an interesting ride that was. But, so, yeah, he would just show me, like, where to where to put my fingers but it wasn't until and we co-wrote everything we would sit in a room like this and it was just like ice fishing like drill a hole everybody throw your line in and we'll see what we get and that's like what writing was in that group and it worked it totally worked which is super interesting now because i haven't written like that since you know now like with us like i'll bring a pretty crude version and let you guys put your skill to it you know what i mean and that's i'm used to that but um yeah, I don't know. I th I think that I still I still could play you the first song that I ever wrote called All yeah, the Boys, like start start to finish. And it's just it's definitely know, just a Tom, Tom Petty rip off. Yeah. You know, just that that real like da dong dong ding da dong dong ding. Sorry, Luke. No, you're good. Just, to, just to make you're sure good. we're rolling. Can you see? It? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll edit any of that out. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. Yeah, it's all I good. did a whole thing in here with Greg for that Vans video. Yeah. The video Didn't thing. record. Yeah. 25 minute <laughs> thing. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah. 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 Really? Record. Yeah. Damn. By the end of it, you're like, let's do it again. Yeah. yeah. One more time. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be your job. Just make, sure, try. That, yeah. make sure you're rolling. Yeah. No, we should nope. be. If we're rolling, it should yeah. be good. Um, so, still recording. We're rolling. Yeah. Sorry to knock us out of where we were. I wanted to make sure we got, we're getting it. Yeah. No, it's okay. And then <clears throat> I think. Shortly after that is like when I. Well, that that leads like directly into color, Delta Spirit, and my relationship with Kelly. Kelly Winrich, for those of you who don't know, who is in Delta Spirit, is a close friend and is just like an incredible musician and always just kind of like knew what he was doing. And so, I wrote, yeah, that song, all the boys, and then maybe like, probably ten over the next year after the color broke up. 
10 in a year and I, you know, I just didn't know if they were any good or bad, but I remember he came to LA with a mobile rig and we rec- we recorded that song in the basement of this, of our LA. I live with Steve Black and he, we recorded it and I, it was the first time I had ever sang. Like I didn't sing in the color ever and I never sang to anyone. That's for sure. And I remember hearing my voice back and be like, dang, that's bad. It's trippy. <laughs> yeah. It's such a weird Crazy. vibe, like hearing your, hearing we your voice back. We were talking about this. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll get into you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sent me a demo yesterday of you singing. Yeah, and I was I like, was dude, say, it's good to hear you sing. Dude, I, uh, yep. Even my voice right now is going to trip me out. <laughs> my question for you, though, is when that, yeah, that moment of this is just a thing in my room, to someone else hearing it was that like as um like enlightening of an experience or was it just kind of like eh, just like swept under the rug like was it a leap kind of a leap of yeah faith yeah something? yeah i'm trying to th- <laughs> i'm trying to think of <clears throat> so i again because i just played like uh, a very crude version of lead guitar in the color mm-hmm. but the color did well in terms of like getting an audience and doing these things, um, getting tours like big tours and things like that. So it was interesting. Again, if you go back and listen to that, that record, you can listen to the color record. It's on Spotify, I believe. Mm. Um, but if you listen to it, like lead is a very loose term. There's no solos or anything, but I played like the very basic, um, melody lines that would, you know, take place for the, vocal parts and i did write those parts which is interesting Hmm. uh with the help of everybody of course like oh maybe it should be more like this but so it was interesting because i cut i sort of cut my teeth in terms of like being in front of someone playing music that way so i like sort of like eased myself into the water like i kind of knew what it was like to be in front of people or like Hmm. play music in front of people which i think is scary in and of itself um when i started writing songs they were kind of just porch songs, right? So like who, you know, if, if I was with some people, like people I trusted or things like that, like I would just play them on the porch, you know, like having a drink or whatever. Oh, so you kind of like were able to sort of, for lack of a better term, like kind of weasel into it like a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Cause I'd already, like I knew casually. it was like to like play it for people, but it was like the first time I was like ex- letting people experience like how I sing. Oh, so there was a lot more crescendo. For sure. Cause me is like, yeah, d- into the deep end. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. At the beginning of COVID, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. being over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like at the Wayfair. But that's, that's, yeah, same. Yeah, same. So, you, so you're just starting to sing now in this uh, uh, harmonies. And then hearing like a demo that you sent me was like very exciting that you're singing lead. Cause I know where that, it's like very exciting place to be. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay. I just opened up a whole world to myself that I didn't know existed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And knowing like how broad that is from my own from my own experience is like a rad thing. I think that's why I was like really excited when we were texting and you sent me this demo. I'm like, dude, Rodney's singing. This is so tight. You know what I mean? Because it's going to be like such a um, such a fun journey from here. I think the hardest part is finding the voice though. Because like in this, I'm my temptation is to just always go falsetto or whatever. Yeah. But like I'm if I do like a lead thing, I feel like I always want to have that kind of like monotone, like I don't care about what's being played right now, but here you go anyway. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) But that's That works, I like that on your demo. Oh, appreciate it. Yeah. That that style. I was listening to um, Mary Gaucher's book uh, this week. I forget what it's called, but um, she talks like a lot about how her, and a lot of people do this, is like, you kind of find someone that you really love and you imitate those people and to get you to the next step. You know what I mean? Whether that's in songwriting or singing or lead guitar playing, you know, finding whatever it is you like, you just kind of find something that you love and you imitate that until you can move past that and be like, this is what I do good. This is how I can do it better. You know? And she talks, she has a lot of same influences as, as me, us, whatever. But like, talking about John Prine and songwriting, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And or talking about, you know, we talk a lot about Lee Von Helm and like the, the it, in this band, we talk a lot about Lee Von Helm and the frog voice. It's like, that helps me get, getting into that head voice helped me get over humps that I wouldn't have been able to get to without knowing how to do that, to go into that weird head voice, you yeah. know? Um, 
And so I kind of was relating with her book earlier this week. Like, well, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I did too, you know? And for me, it was like simple stuff, Tom Petty, John Prine, and then Towns. And I just wanted to write that well. I didn't care how the voice sounded, but yeah, over time, you know, I kind of know myself enough to know where I want to be <laughs> on the guitar neck. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like I know for my voice, as far as like, if I were to like lead a song or something, like I would kind of go in this like weird, uh, joy division <laughs> vocal sure. direction or something. Which like, is like completely amazing and has its place. I mean, yeah. It has know? its place. Yeah. Like that's trying to where it, that's where I'm like trying to figure out is like where and when, but like, yeah, something about like my voice being able to only go to that, like aloof kind of mindset of singing versus like being really into it. And just like, you know, gospel like, uh. sure. yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting, the introvert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's an introvert in sure. it's an interesting question. Well, this leads me into an interesting question about you, Rodney is, we were talking about being introverts and what that means. And I'm curious wh wh how you ended up at the base. That's a good question. Um, well, I started on piano from like eight to 12. And then um, the bass kind of came around like 13, 14. It was kind of like, oh, this is a cool guitar. You should get this like from my grandma. <laughs> my grandma's like the reason why I, I do things creative anyways right um but yeah eventually i just started it just started molding my personality like uh i don't know more and more like because when people think of the bass player one they don't like for, for example like a bass line to someone like they think you're killing it if you're playing the song by yourself <laughs> like that's a bass solo to right. people <laughs> like not like ripping on the end of the neck yeah or um but yeah so i don't know i've grown into it being my personality. I know like I don't mind being behind a curtain and playing the bass line like during a live gig. Right. Like I don't want that attention. And like another problem is if I get complimented while I'm playing, it just screws me up. Oh, interesting. So like someone's like, "Oh yeah, that was sick." It's like don't say that. Like it's like <laughs> yeah. ruining the moment kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh we were kind of talking about like when uh we all or like jamming or something or just in general and we're like having a good time with someone and then w someone has to say we're having a good time right now <laughs> Dude, <it sucks. laughs> we're but, having a good time right now right yeah, yeah. So, oh this is sick right? Poof. This is totally yeah it's gone. gone gone dude so like on a scale of one to ten dorian on a scale of one to dorian <laughs> you how nervous were you singing at the wayfair that was definitely Eight. that was definitely Rodney's first time singing in in like with this band. Yeah, definitely. At least like a solid eight. Like a solid eight. That yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eight's, ba eight's bad. That's pretty yeah. solid. That's a pretty <laughs> yeah. solid number. Up I'm there, a dude. confident bass player, but like, I'm already nervous. Like regardless of the set, <laughs> anyways. So then throwing something I've never done before in front of people, like, definitely pumps that number up a bit. And like I won't even sing at home and stuff, like unless like <laughs> no offense Courtney, but like <laughs> unless she's like at work or something. Sure. Like it's complete like I gotta be so isolated. No, we talk about that pretty yeah. pretty often. But I remember I remember seeing when me and you started talking when I was like knew that I was kinda headed home. Um and we like were briefly talking about like jamming just on Instagram or whatever. And you were like, oh, yeah, I played with this dude, Derek. And I remember seeing Derek, and I remember seeing you just playing your drums on, on the side of the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just, like, oh, just oh, open up your car and just, like, set up your drum set and play. <laughs> yeah. Explain this to me, because it's something we've actually never talked about. On Instagram or something? Yeah. That like, was, your, just, that was like, your first experience of me? Yeah, because he was like, oh, I play with this drummer. He's great. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'd, like, <laughs> see your story. And it would just be a just chopping like, it up. Just open up. Yeah, we just, open, like, pull out the drums out of his car on the side <laughs> of the road and just play there. Yes. Um, <laughs> dang. Um, 
this is something that I mean the struggle any other drummer is laughing right now that's right. listening to this because they're like, damn, the homie probably lives in an apartment or something like that. That's yeah, yes, that's what I did. Uh, so <laughs> so a, a, as as a person who grew up in, in, a, in an apartment or I got married young. I'm I'm twenty seven now. I got married at twenty twenty one. I just turned twenty one. Right. I got married. Uh, we lived in pretty small spots. Uh, I had a drum set at my parents' house, but yeah, ever since moving out, man, I just I never had a place to play my drums. Sure. It was always like I can piss off my neighbors and like make home life miserable, yeah. or like just go have fun and not like I I, I want to play the drums without like any worrying about making people piss. You sure. know, so I just want to like lay and get the ideas that are in my head out. That's actually so sick. That that's what it was about. Just like oh, I'm just gonna go pull up and pull the drums out. That's and all. Play right that's here. literally Practical. all it was, bro. It was so like sick. Abby was just like you know she'd get home from work, she'd be all tired. I'm like I'm like pecking out. I would get practice pad drum sets in my apartment, right. dude, and just, and just she would get pissed. My neighbors get pissed. <laughs> so like literally, dude. <laughs> I, I come home one time with this with this seven eight hundred dollar drum set, which is the Gretsch kit that I yeah. play with us now. Yeah, uh, it's the first drum set I ever I ever purchased for with my own money, right. and it was tiny. And, and I, I I used to have that in the apartment. I bring that home. She was pissed, and she's like, "You're not playing that here. There's no way." <laughs> so I had this drum set for weeks that I have never played. I've never played on it. I have it in my I set it up in my apartment. I think I put like silent heads on it or something like that. Uh, but I, I spent money on this drum set I never played. So basically, uh, I was like, all right, whatever. I'm going to go play by the freeway then. So she laughs at me. I loaded down my car and and just go fight fight this fine spots in the world. Like, I don't know. I was, just, I was in Fontana, so I would just go by the freeway. and like So crazy. I was kind of close to houses, and cops would come and yell at me. Hey, houses are complaining, and they'd kick me to another, another spot. And I'd go, you hey. get kicked out of playing by a freeway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would get kicked out. Uh, I, I think I got kicked out of like three spots. That's actually um, very real. But yeah, the last cop that that uh, that busted me or whatever, he he came over and they, they they would always pull up on me and just watch me in the parking lot for like ten minutes, just watch me play drums. Right. And then they roll up on me like, hey man, like I was super digging what you're doing, but you gotta go. People are complaining or whatever. <laughs> but the last guy, he goes, dude, there's this spot by Home Depot. Go play over there. You will never get bothered. It's like it's in the middle of nowhere, bro. And I, that's I'm like, okay, so cool, sick. done. So I go over there, and that's where I played for a lot. Made a lot of videos. So basically, just I used a so AC tiny. cord for my car, plugged it into the port of my car, uh, recorded it with a Yamaha EAD, and so crazy. just recorded raw drums. And I would go home later and record music on it, and like do all over the sax the and, and yeah. just make music and play guitar and just that's make so music cool. over the the audio files of the drum. I think we made a few tracks together. Yes, that's that's, that's like and that, that's around the time we started jamming. Cool yeah. story. You I wonder it. how it sounds. You should send me. If you it's have crazy, bro. Recording. I find some of the projects with just raw jumps. I'm like, what is this? And then I find the Insta just, videos. I'm like, how did that happen? I'm curious just, about the sound outside. Yeah. Better than you would think. Yeah. Better than you. You can't even hear my car running. Yeah, those are like two. That was that was the one thing that I recall like straight away is like seeing this dude play his drums on the freeway, by the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> and two that you're a Bulls fan, so I was like, oh, I don't know if we're gonna get along. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's right. Dang it! I rep that pretty proudly. Yeah, of well, course, as you should, as yeah. you should. I don't know. I'm moving. Like a, I'm moving away from being a team guy. Like so many people, upset me on teams. I'm <laughs> moving into just being like a player guy. You guys all know me. For those of you who know me, they know I love Damian Lillard. So D Lil, dude, yeah. can't not like D Lil. But so then you two met playing at church. Yep. Is yep. that where you first played? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which is a pretty common story in music in general. Yeah, like yes. that's where a lot of musicians meet. I don't know why the church facilitates yes. creativity within music. Uh, for is a age like it's an age old story as long as as long as you could remember. Yeah, yeah very for true. sure. Well, it gives it gives you a a weekly platform, sure. weekly yeah. gig to play, and there's probably a rotating cast, right? Yeah, yeah. And then eventually, kind of people start understanding who vibes better with who. <laughs> oh, and then, who's the real dude, player? Dude, it's a trip. Like, like uh, I don't want to sound like, this is going to sound kind of weird, but like every show or every other show, people like, I don't maybe just because people are used to like bass and drums, like being a unit always, but like people will like go out of their way to comment on like me and Derek vibing or something. And it's like so weird. That's true. It's That's like true. strictly. It gave you guys confidence. I never to, really thought about that. Yeah. Do your That's, thing, yeah. But just like it's like definitely otherworldly because like it's very distinct. It's not like like oh you and the whole ba-. like it is like you and the band band jam like right. mesh well. Yeah. But like specifically like whatever like yeah. m- when me and Derek did Graves, like I I mean like <laughs> there was definitely a vibe change like sure. <laughs> for the better or whatever. Yeah. Sure. And that, yeah, that's always been like a notable thing. So I don't know if like time or just friendship and 
all that just kind of spilled into our music. Right. When was it that you started playing together? Dude, it all happened so fast. It has dude. to be I don't like five I don't... years ago or something. Shoot. Yeah, I don't remember I don't remember how this all started to be really honest with you, bro. Yeah, like, well I remember We were playing, we started playing off yeah. obviously and at some point we were like you're kind of dope, dog. Like, <laughs> you're like, you're not just a bass yeah, player. And then yeah. he was like, you're not? Like, what? Like, I don't know what, like, I don't remember when that happened, but, like, we would really get juiced when we play together. And yeah. then we only play together. And then but that's we started an, hanging that's out after. But that's also an interesting subject. I think it was the common bond within all of us is that every one of us skateboards. Yeah. Like, yeah. Danny and Rodney yeah. happen to be really good, but we've all skateboarded forever. So were you guys skating together, too, before? Well, the funny thing is, I would see him at uh, Rialto Park, Ferguson, and not realize, like, who he was or whatever. Right. That's right. And then I worked at Active, too, so he probably saw me not realizing right. the other way around. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, like, we actually officially met each other at um, at the youth. I was gonna say it was youth. That's what it's it like was, a youth dude. Night yeah, or through Cameron. I think through it was Cameron. through Cameron. Yeah, Cameron you came Moss. through one night, and I was just like, Rialto Park. Yeah. And you were like, Yep. Oh, funny. And I was like, Oh, like, yeah. dude, how long you? And we started talking about skating. Yeah. Oh. And dang, then you went to bro, go play, and I was like, Oh, he's actually. It's not like you're a skater that knows how to play a couple like drum licks or whatever. I was right. like, Oh, this dude's ripping. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sick. Locked. Yeah. Crazy. Dude. Ever since then. Since day Graves. one. Day one, AK. bro. AK. Yeah, and that's AK was was. St- I mean, you guys were still pretty pretty. You were doing that pretty regularly, like when we first started jamming, mm-hmm. which is dope. And you guys should do that more often. I think it's like a very awesome, very free form ver- yeah. version of jamming, which I think is like yes. very necessary. That was your project. <clears throat> your it was both of us. Yeah. yeah, it was probably just like out of uh, not animosity, but just more like a want to just like creative outlet. Like we need to like just let chop. loose like <laughs> let loose like yeah. let what's in our heads out like yeah. i know he's into like the thundercat like jazz fusion stuff and weather we came report from, we kind of yeah sure. dude we, we 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 linked a lot on on the type of music we listen to yeah. as well and you know we started hanging out and started you know skating and, and doing all this stuff but yeah the realization of like <laughs> oh this dude loves music bro like this dude listens to jocko this dude listens to like weather report all these people that right. i i grew up that i was fascinated by yeah. for a lot of the same reasons and um that that kind of just it, in itself, we're like, you like that? I like that. What uh, you play like that? I, you know, it was just this 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 constant like battle of like we want to get what we both love so much out when right. we don't exactly have. We didn't have an outlet to do it. We had no. church, and then we had like you know when we yeah. were in Craves, it was like the rock stuff, and yeah. we didn't have this like like you said that free form kind of just get behind sure. our instruments and just let what comes out comes out yeah. together. Yeah. You know, church. It was like it was kind of cool because church we could kind of like. Our homie Justin, the worship leader, was very open to like us, like being us, and that yeah. that was probably the, one of the biggest encouraged it things. He yeah, wanted us to like, hey, let loose. Yeah, church is you. a huge, huge like factor in like at least I'll speak for my own playing, like just being able to being a like giving so being given so much freedom to where you realize like, oh, okay, like you have to check your own freedom, like like that's. It's like like parent. It's like the theory of like parents being so free that like they let the kids like figure it out for right. themselves. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. so you have, you guys are playing songs, mm-hmm. but within those songs, your band leader or whoever would say improvise, do whatever you, you could do whatever you want. Well, we just had like an ability to improvise, and like it's kind of like if someone's giving you like jazz charts, it's like you have chords to play, yeah. and uh, he may um you know like tell you to bring bring it up or bring it down mm-hmm. but as far as how you get to those levels is like completely yeah that's cool. it's like yeah. worship music yeah, is not good. is not the most it's one of the most easy genres in my opinion to play it's it's very you know almost poppy just very you know backbeat just very simple uh song, simple song structure everything's easy yeah. to, easy to follow um <clears throat> so being me and him already jammed well already kind of knew our stuff was just like playing these regular songs with just like simple and yeah. we would naturally have these like add little our own little yeah. thing to it and mm. and when we would he wouldn't get mad like he would just be like oh dude that was tight yeah like yo rodney yo that was sick dude like hey, yeah hey do that during you better church, do that during the service around, like look at yeah. us and be like yeah. i'm like Woo! and like i don't know that was just a, a cool thing that we were like dude we can like let our emotions out here sure. like this is a this is a free place like this is dope um does it feel like any any like a like a normal gig did you get nervous like playing at church 
not as nervous always a little bit for me yeah. i'm just naturally i get nervous yeah. whenever i'm in front of people anyways <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just got nervous talking about know, getting nervous. Like, anyways uh, 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 anyway. subject. yeah <laughs> i mean a little bit but it was like yeah. i don't know you have the music right in front of you which is kind of funny because like i would memor like i'll memorize all these songs like all day long whatever but dude four songs like yeah. i was glued to the page right like it's <laughs> Right. It's because I never listened to like that genre of worship music. Sure. But like, yeah, I was just like, okay, like anticipating every written note, like not actual music notes, but just letter. Right. <laughs> I'm going to let her pee. You guys carry on. Yeah. Dude, thinking about it now, like that, I think, dude, I think church like really got helped me with gigs in general. Like, oh, definitely. Yeah, it's good for sure. sure. You're dude, playing like, regular. Dude, yeah. And then yeah. perfect. Being professional, yeah. church helped me like astronomically. Yeah. Like mistakes, um, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Being yeah, and being like there on time and like uh don't play when you know people are talking or like that type of stuff. Dude, yeah. it, that stuff changed like that was such a big that's thing. That's pretty good, man. That's yeah, that's like Yeah. Thanks. Check, check. Let me double check these uh mics. That word. One for the boy. The boy. That boy. Yeah, so it's like school. It's like going to school a little bit. Like a, it's like a swella, dude. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Got you reload on the brewski, dude. Oh, I was just gonna ask if there was enough to have a. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, dude. One for the road instead. You're probably like eight or nine. It's funny because like skate beers are like m m always PBR or Coors. Sure. Light. I've, knew, I've I'm noticed that. I'm so much more cool. down for mod this Modelo, Bro. especially y'all. I don't like the Negros very much, but the Negros this are, is like... Or if you're trying to get a little extra lit, mm -hmm. and you're like, you're like, eh, I don't want just a get normal it? chill beer. I, want, I kind of yeah. want to get a little lit. Sure. <laughs> I want to have less beers, and you know, but those are, yeah, they're, they're different. These are just easy to drink, dude. One, seven, yeah. doesn't matter, dude. Yeah, it's, it's got enough water in it. You, you know what I'm saying? Feel hydrated. Oh, dude, it feels great. Yeah, you're chilling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, my dog, June, was pretty much with me anywhere I go, but she was looking at me like, look, she's still doing it. Jimba. Like what? She's, she's just bored. She, yeah, she's bored. Jimba. So I'm gonna give her the bone, but I'm gonna put it way over here so that it doesn't. So, so it, anybody so listening cute. that can hear my dog, she's snorty. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey! Go get your bone. Come here. Go get your bone. You want this? You played in school though too, right? You, did you play in school? Yeah, uh, yeah dude. Talk about the jazz dude, upbringing. I, yeah, man. It wasn't even drum set didn't come to way later. I think the nerves, the nerves thing. I don't want to say I got over the nerves thing at any point in my life. I definitely still get nervous. Like that first show back at the Wayfair, well, I was a little nervous. So mm -hmm. I was like the and I'm singing in front of people. It was it was pretty nervous. You but never like sang before. Yes, have. I, I have had experience singing in front of people. I've uh, I, I wrote a song with my with my buddy as as a freshman in high school. We sang that in front of the whole school to rally. That was wow, super sketch. In high school? In high school. <laughs> that in sounds, front of the entire school. If there's probably anything that I'd rather do less, there's nothing I'd rather do yeah. less than probably sing in front of people at high school. Wow. Yeah, it point, was the most terrifying age. moment of my life. That I think I died part partly that day. <laughs> of how much how nervous I was I, my buddy started uh, that I was playing I was in drumline um, I was a huge drumline kid which um, I ended up going on doing the, the the DCI stuff and playing in front of arenas full of people dude so that was like my what's like the, I am freaking nervous right now I have to go and run around on, on on a stadium you know and not fall down like it just that, that was a whole nother level of like nerves I guess what's that gig DCI yeah so drum corps international is like uh, uh, is a it's kind of like the I tell people it's like the NFL of marching band of nerds marching band. It's like, so you're competing, you, you, yeah. It's the highest level of like marching band banding that you can really do in America. I mm -hmm. guess is like the, the the USA national like Olympics of marching band kind of kind of deal. They they put it in the movie theaters once a year. It's like it's like a big big thing. Are there like people still doing? Sorry, Kaya. Yeah. Is it is it like are there still like older people or is there kind of like an age cutoff? Twenty one crazy age limit is 21 so cuts off to 21 then what um, they do is, after? Is, is called age out is when you age out yeah you Dang. age out at 21 so anybody even if you're in high school technically you can still do drum corps there's kids like high school kids that perform at a high level Whoa. that play at a professional level with the with the bigger guys um, are you just expected to like get a gig 
like after you age out or are you kind of expected to be like a tech or something uh, that and that's the thing that early on I, I started teaching and there's only really one way to do it for a living is is teaching um mm. is is going on and teaching high schools and stuff like that but yeah there's not there's not much of a living outside of it other than teaching but yeah. in Have high school just the doing Nick all that Cannon stuff. movie drumline it's my one of my favorite movies too. It's the best <laughs> movie. realistic by no means but uh one of the best movies ever dude. and and that movie yeah. solely dude is is what made me do drumline dude really? so, yeah i'm not even kidding dude like wow, I, was, I, I was i was i've never seen it but i'll watch it now dude so good are you kidding me right now dude shame on you Seen the poster. It's the best freaking. How's Whiplash? That's a great movie. Yeah, that that's one's a good that's movie. A great movie. Oh, wait, I've, I've seen, seen Whiplash. I love Miles that, Teller. How is that I was from a like, drummer's perspective? There's a whole YouTube. I love Miles Teller. It. That dude, yeah. he wasn't really playing the drums, but he 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 can he can and bit. he did a lot of the acting. Like he he was yeah. acting really like, really acting sure. and doing. Um, but that movie was actually amazing. I'm for a jazz drummer. That was that yeah. was pretty freaking dope. That was very overkill, but like very accurate. Actually, very. Um, real. That's that's that shit's real. <laughs> like jazz is very very like that. My, yeah, that, my jazz that movie was like that. intense. Jazz has been Shout kind of Shackle. usurped by like the the what's the word? It's like the sport, the 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 competitive Com- competition. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Jockified. Spirit. Jockified. Thank you. That's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Co- co-opted. Yeah. It's been co- it's been co-opted. Dude, I, yeah, I I I'm. I take lessons and most shout out Judson's billiards while we're here. Hey. Uh, that's my guy. Um, yes, sir. And I've had I've had a lot of fun learning a lot of jazz voicings on the guitar. It's like really opened up a lot for me and learning a lot of those things. It's it's very fun. I, I get why. I get why it's so intriguing, especially from his mind because he gets it the way you get it on drums, and um, I'll never get it. But it's really fun to like try and learn. Um, yeah. it opened a lot of doors for things like recently, like the Travis picking or like all the Carl stuff. Really? Like yeah. you know, I've just really enjoyed all learning to play that stuff. But starting from at least getting the fingering down was like starting to make me enjoy playing guitar a lot more than I had in a long time. Yeah. Which is starting to get incorporated in, into songs, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's like the there is the spirit of improvising that I was saying that I wish I I kind of latched onto earlier. Right. Right in jazz, I mean that's that's the idea. You have form, and then yeah, you can do whatever you want w- within that form. Playing. Uh, but jazz for me has always seemed like emotion it is the ability to play what you feel inside on an instrument mm. that's how i've always interpreted jazz when i listen to it and when or blues blues is a good example of that too um but like when you when i listen to jazz it's just very like how can someone speak so fluently on mm. on an instrument and communicate emotion so fluently mm. um whatever notes or whatever is coming out in this beautiful melody of like riffs and it's it's just it's always astounded me how how sure. challenging that is in theory you can be the best musician ever or you could be the best guitar player ever but like you said when you when you say oh ad lib a little bit freestyle you can be the best rapper ever when when you go oh freestyle rap it's like people go oh that's yeah. like a whole other thing dude that's like a whole you know it's like yeah. it's just uh you're communicating something off you're communicating emotion as raw as it is you know on an instrument yeah, which is yeah so that's cool. that's um why that Keith Jarrett, that Cone concert, Keith Jarrett thing is so important to me. That uh, Sorry, that record, the Cone concert, is so important to me. He's like, I've never, I had never heard someone sort of like, the whole time you can hear where he's going, where he's about to go, with his mouth, while on the piano. It's just the most mm. insane thing ever. And you can tell it's 100 percent like ad-libbed and he's you know he's mouthing exactly where he's going or where he's at or where he's going to be and it's like okay this dude is like as tuned in to an instrument as you could possibly be uh yeah it's i mean for anybody who hasn't spent time with that record it's just crazy yeah how tuned in he is to that thing man i always like i always appreciate like because i'm not a soloist nor do i really i'm not really drawn to soloing but I do always appreciate hearing someone chase, like, right? Where you can hear like yeah, almost like, flaws, right? In order to get somewhere like that is like the jam, totally. And like I, I mean, I am an improviser, like by nature. Like I don't think I'll ever play a song twice the same way, really. Right. Um, but yeah, I definitely just 
yeah, that's my lane. Like, I'm kind of the opposite of you, Danny. Like, I wish I kind of took in more songs to kind of understand different perspectives uh, mm -hmm. or genres or whatever, and then I can draw from that. But my, my whole goal growing up has always been, like, I just want to be able to pick up any instrument and play it. Mm. Not, like, any song, like, play a song, but just... Like no, if someone, around. Yeah, if someone was to ask me, like, right. were to ask me, like, oh, what what'd you just play right now? I'd be like, just made it up. Yeah. <laughs> but it's tight. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. But yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so moving along. Danny, I'm trying to think of like, was Paul was Palmetto the, the Palmetto the first studio that you like worked at? Mm, no. Um, I think it was Pheasant, Corey, Corey Gash. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Costa I lived there. And, and and Corey, yeah. Where? Well, I lived, yeah. Pheasant, yeah. So the Romney Rye made a record there, actually, too. Um, yeah, studio in Santa, Santa Ana. Ana. Yeah, My actually friends. a cool space. Has a lot. Yeah, really and, cool. Yeah, I associate it with Matt Costa. Just yeah, because. Matt Matt subletted it for yeah. a while. And so we were in there a bunch around that time. I was living in that area. It's, what is this, like 2011, 12, I think? Sure. And I moved in there. It's pretty crazy, like kind of like this in an in industrial area. Like no one lives there or around there. Mm -hmm. But Corey decked it out. It's like got, it's got a nice life. It kind of feels like living on a nice boat. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> And so yeah, I moved in there, and and part of the intent was to get familiar, was just to be to make music and right. to learn how to um, do things myself. So I didn't I don't I didn't have internet. <laughs> no, <laughs> I YouTube? was just there. Yeah, <laughs> just figuring it out. I, mean, I had my phone and stuff to communicate, but wait, that place is uh, was Pro Tools then. Yeah, it was then? A Pro Tools. I was using Pro Tools yeah, then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I didn't learn too much technically because I was so into write, writing and trying to get stuff down. So I just, pre it was more like just pressing record. Sure. And so I made an EP. It's kind of like, it's kind of lost now. I don't oh, know that's where it. the Pheasant EPs are. Oh. No, that's one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's one I did there. I did one before that too. And I don't oh, know where it is. Interesting. It's on Spotify it's or anything. long lost. It was. Oh. And then I didn't. Forgot to pay for it. Pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it disappeared and I don't know where the file went. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, that, so that Pheasant is the first one. And there's a long interval. I, again, this is another thing. I, if I can go back, I would have done this a lot earlier is to get a space, proper space. Mm -hmm. I, I love recordings and I love non-professional recordings and I love home recordings. Yeah. But so I thought I can just get some like. $30 Casio in my bedroom and make cool shit, which you can. Yeah. And I did, and I learned a lot, but you could, you, I need a space. So there was yeah. a long interval. I think Pheasant, and then, was this like 2018, maybe I started, um, started going into Palmetto in the Arts District. Yeah. In downtown. And that's where we, that's where we sort first of started. First started recording some of what will be this what will be bleed by example abby which still, i don't know abby if you guys is that studio what's that abby still misses that studio. Oh, it's beautiful it's, like, i miss that studio. yeah it's the area yeah. it's, the, it's yeah. really the where it's it at it's fun dude whole vibe but it's the great. price of this studio is just it's so, not fun so dude. Right. not worth it that way yeah you pay for that <laughs> <laughs> when the price is right you know the um, and the the sonic difference too for me is like so obvious on the songs yeah that place had a very that place had a very high ceiling and no just no it wasn't treated dampening. the walls weren't treated yeah no. it, was, it was just raw so you, everything would just bounce around yeah. mm. which ser which completely served a really rad purpose yeah but it's the completely opposite of this um it's a pain in the is, ass to mix yeah for me the old one or this one <laughs> the old one. Oh yeah yeah because it's just yeah everything's <laughs> yeah, bouncing around like, i can't yeah. hear yeah dude we, and it's crazy we used to like straight up like crank out the like saturdays heavy like it would be like what we do like four songs i would try yeah and then just, just to, yeah let's just yeah. track everything Work well because we were still like pay, we were still like paying for the time yeah so you had to you know now we have our own studio which doesn't actually have a name um ladder factory. Ladder yeah factory. we just call it the ladder, ladder factory, factory but the name. yeah um 
Yeah, now that we have our own studio and time, we don't have to really like. It's pretty easy to like Wax, demo like, or record yeah. or do whatever. It's definitely made know, the but... whole situation less ang- yeah. anxious. <clears throat> yeah, um, have, have you noticed a difference at all between <clears throat> any of the um, songs as far as the, um, the recording process? Like, has it spilled into any of the tracks noticeably to any of you? Like, from let's say, like I don't know, uh, three days to. Um, uh, one of the later songs, I don't even. <laughs> no country, no country. Yeah. That's the newest one. That's the newest oh, one. No, yeah. yeah, no country. Um, shoot, I don't, I don't. Maybe that's a question for Danny. I don't know. That's a great question. I dude. think in general there was just a transitioning to what this band as a group of 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 people was going to be, in terms of like writing. I didn't, I didn't know exactly. I knew that I just like, I have my music that will all you know my solo music for lack of a better term or whatever and that will always just be like written on acoustic and whatever but i think that i i had missed the camaraderie of being in a band and being somewhere where people could share their sort of creative experiences you know like with the songs that i had written instead of like okay this is my thing like i know i know what my thing is you know what i mean i know what i can do well me and danny were just having a conversation about this but it's like, I think there was a transitioning and I don't know if this will maybe answer your question, but there was a transitioning to knowing like how people played and what people wanted to play. And I started writing specifically for this band when I realized sort of the outside influences of things like, you know, weather report or jazz or lots of hip hop that we always talk about, Mm -hmm. or, you know, and I was like, okay, like, so Derek and Rodney are two, really groovy players right like and have these influences these like influences that are like are mine too but different from mine on a a normal basis and then you have danny and reverend baron's music which i feel like uh, again is could could belong on like um yeah like art lebeau playlist Mm -hmm. and i mean that with the utmost respect yeah so I was like, what makes sense? It's like, I listen to a lot of country and a lot of folk music and it's like, okay, how are we gonna put these all together? And so I started writing completely differently and mostly electric. I started taking my electric guitar home, oh. which was like a big difference. And that's where everything changed. Cause I was like, okay, I was, th- I was writing thinking with you guys in mind as opposed to just like, okay, I'm gonna write this like one, four, five country song. You know what I mean? I'm like started listening to different things, started taking in different influences and then sort of started writing, like thinking as a band, like, Oh, I can hear the boom bap. You know what I mean? I can hear the bass line get funky. I can hear. And I just sort of started thinking out of the box, but it's funny. Cause three days, I think really serves a purpose. Q three days. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And then, <laughs> you know, and then you go to something like Steppenwolf, you know, which is like some version. Yeah, some version of like a, a, a soul, some version of soul, I guess. Um, kind of the hip hop thing we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of like a lot of like 90s influenced hip hop backbeats. Liquid Swords. Yeah, Liquid about Swords. On Steppenwolf, right? Steppenwolf. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the organs. Totally. And I think that. So I don't totally know if I if I answered your question, but I just think I started writing different for, for yeah, being in a band. That's a, that is the difference. Is you as a writer, you can cater and start um, even before you start writing a song, you can um, you can kind of point your arrow at right. something. Sure. And even there was an adjustment for me because at the beginning it was like I can rein you guys. I could almost produce because I don't I don't think of myself as a producer in, in this group. I think of myself as the engineer. You almost kind of produce more because you'll have a little bit of a vision, right? You wrote the song and you'll kind of have the influences and 
that's kind of a producer role. So I do, I'll, I will produce in a way, but mostly an engineer. But still, I, I think I remember I, at the beginning, I can cut would rein you guys in a little bit or or want to if I didn't. But now I know, like now that I know your style and I've gotten to know you, I can I'm like let it, you know, um, whatever. I don't need to give you direction. You'll find it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like a good time to uh, cue uh, uh, Gold Rush. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I I remember we uh, the f original recording just like in the like practice studio we were at compared to like when you when we were all in the studio and I think you had me play more busy which I am always kind of like yeah skeptical of doing just because like you're, I'm always told not to play busy or whatever sure. and you're like kind of just go really crazy and then we'll just tone it back a little bit and then, that'd be know. favorite song by the way dude <laughs> simply because she's like I love how busy Rodney is like oh, I, that God. this bass line is literally making this song come alive it kind of became the identity that's what she told me those are her words James Jamerson based on yeah that's like the source for sure right like you could totally hear it well when I I say that meaning like that's that was my goal <laughs> not close <laughs> yeah. to playing like the dude <laughs> but, <laughs> that was my intention <laughs> but yeah like versus other songs where I'll kind of just like have a little like a, maybe a quick little part or thing that's different on the bass but yeah I just remember distinctively that song was like <laughs> yeah a little splash a little splash <laughs> It's funny because I think I truly believe that my one of my favorite, mo certainly top three favorite moments on the record is second verse of Sweet Spot where the bass falls out and it's very uh, like, okay, this is Cruiser. And then the, the Rodney bass line back into the second verse. Yes. Mm. That's probably <laughs> like on my top favorite moments of this entire record for some reason. Hail Mary, mother full of grace I wonder if she heard us With that Frankie finally wound up dead Trying to move the surplus Good money's hard to call me by straight Now the five don't scratch the surface Hail Mary, mother full of grace that's like one of the that's one of the moments that i go like okay this is working you yeah. know what i mean i'm like really happy yeah, that's great. the way that 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 came out you know yeah. and, just and that. your fills at the end which i don't know what you call those oh but it's a lot of syncopation just like heavy <laughs> uh shoot what i don't know it's just that? a lot of notes a lot of the jazz yeah, yeah yeah is that sweet spot still yeah, yeah. yeah. Did that? Where I get all jazzy at the end. Yeah. That was the one spot where I'm like, I know this is like different, like where I'm usually chilling in the pocket, but I'll like, I'll come out just a little bit. I'll peek my head out. Yeah. yeah. I remember telling you, because like, I think there was a point where y you would hit the like crash or whatever, but then I th it might have been one of us. Maybe it was you. It wasn't me. I was like, dude, do a fill. <laughs> like, one of us were like, dude, do a fill every time, like on that part. Sounds like, like something you would say. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. Facts. I'm like yeah, a drum. I'm a drummer that doesn't know like how to make my body work on the drums. You're like, hey, Derek, can you go for it? Can you go ham right now? Can you just <laughs> yeah. Go for it. See, see what happens. Yeah. I mean, that song has a lot of um, like bad, bad, not good vibes into it. Facts. That's Which like, is something we talked about yeah. pretty yeah. often. I mean, they make great, great records. Yeah. You know, um, we talked about production even mm -hmm. at times because their production is really cool and and. <sighs> I don't know. I guess, for lack of a better word, like old school in a, in the best way possible. Yeah. Um, but even like the chord progression on that song was really inspiring. Just because like, I don't know. I really love those, you know, I don't know. Dissonant. Non, yeah. Dissonant, dissonant. non-linear right. chords like yeah. hanging, kind of just hanging there on the edge and yeah. you know, like question marks almost. Yeah. And you, you, you kind of that just, before. Your writing on that song in particular got like changed. Right. On that one. Yeah. That has. 
that's like an interesting song. A lot changed from that when that song happened, but it's kind of funny because it just came. It was in, it was totally one hundred percent inspired by uh, that two chain song. Which one? Maybe it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Dude. It is yeah. a vibe. Dude. But how's the verse go? How's the verse go? Um, if you're getting paid, it's strictly based on your performance. Uh, you know what I mean? But yeah. there's like a guitar lick in there. Dun, bun, and it just... Dun, dun, exactly. Dun, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, I just heard this, and I'm like... I this, love that song. This song... <laughs> I mean, like, if you listen to it, it's mm -hmm. a, it, you're like, okay, this is... Yeah, actually... Hey, say what you want about 2 chains, bro, but my boy can spit. Yeah. My boy can vibe, dude. <laughs> it's a vibe. Well, that hey. song is... That song, like, it's actually a vibe, is a vibe. Dude. Yeah. I don't know who produced... I, I'm curious who made that, because... I like guitar music with any, I mean, I'm sorry, I like hip hop music with any guitar sample in it. Mm. And we can go all the way, I mean, you can go through a DJ list Click, of them. Snoop Dogg. And, and, yeah. And, and Kroonbin does it really good where they, they like do that, like they do like a hip hop uh, medley of like guitar music and it's all the samples and you're like, okay. You like realize <laughs> like, oh my gosh, there's so many good samples. But anyways, I heard that 2 Chain song and I'm like, the groove is just so good and it's just like very linear. You know, like an open for a verse, and then I'm like, okay. And so you'll notice that, like, the choruses don't really aren't this like big chorus. It's very linear. And then the live show is when the solo happens. You know what I mean? That's when the thing goes big and then sucks back down into a chorus, to a quiet chorus. It felt like very different. And it, oh, yeah, it opened up a lot of doors, I think, creatively, for certainly for me, but also for us. You know, yeah. like, it was. That's yeah. my favorite one, son sonically. Sonically. Yeah. Me too. The way it sounds. Yeah. yeah. I think No Country is a close second because I feel like that's kind of the result of what we've, like, that was a great song to kind of end the the recording process on. Yeah. Just because it was kind of like, like, all of our, uh, our growth, like, right. finalized in that song, I feel like. Sure. Like, that one came out of a jam. Out of a out jam. Out of a jam. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Which is like, that's the only one that came it. out of a jam, right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. crazy. And that Shout out Abby, dude. I, I know Abby's like capture of like a random jam. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Is that Instagram. what it was? Yeah. 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 You got the audio? Dude, yeah. I brought her to that rehearsal <laughs> yeah. and like we literally we, we we walk in, I I arrive and I'm like, Oh, what's up guys? I sit down behind the kit and like she just takes out her camera and we're all just like talking or whatever. Right. I forgot, I think you started it or somebody started it. Yeah, you had that riff, that sort of thing. And then I started playing along, he started playing, and then you started playing along, and we're just like five minutes later we're jamming, she just started taking videos. Crazy, it would have been lost though. Yeah, yeah. That would have just been nothing it. had yeah. she yeah. not. I got it. home and she showed me the video and yeah. I was like, "What yeah. the hell? That that's dope. Like that, that sounds good." And then like next rehearsal, Song you're like, already. "Hey, yeah. by the way, I wrote some lyrics. <laughs> check it out." And we're like, "What?" Dude? And yeah. The next rehearsal, we're we're recording yeah. it. Like, I don't even crazy, know, dude. I I don't even know because it wasn't there. It wasn't there prior, but the but the the like um turnaround seven chord was like yeah. what i feel like my greatest contribution to that song. <laughs> yeah because we were just jam oh, we were yeah. just jamming yeah. on the a but when it goes yeah, to that yeah. one it just fe you're like oh that feels good that's right yeah. you yeah. know like yeah. so q <laughs> q yeah, no, no country, country <laughs> Lead by Example, our new record, will be out by the end of the summer. Our first song off the record, If Loving You Is Right, I Don't Want to Be Right, is out now. Um, what else, Rodney? Go get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, y'all. Peace. <laughs>